ANC Member of Parliament Dr Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma says that she felt aggrieved after she and other members were not allowed to raise their views at last week's NEC meeting regarding the adoption of the report of the Independent Panel of Experts on the Palapala Farm Saga in the National Assembly. The panel found that President Cyril Ramaphosa may have violated his oath of office. Most of the ANC MPs voted against the adoption of the report, whilst the majority of the opposition parties uh, voted in favour. Our international news editor, Sophie Mkwena, had a sit-down with Dr. Glamini Zuma. I didn't defy the party. I voted as a public representative in Parliament. But let's go back to the party. In the party, I'm an NEC member. In the NEC, issues like this should be debated exhaustively by everyone in the NEC before a conclusion is reached. That Monday, I think it was the 4th or something, a meeting took place. There were about 80 names that were pronounced that are going to speak, including my name. But somewhere at number 50 something, we're told there's a glimpse of the summer. It's a glimpse of the summer. No, it's not the summer, it's just a glimpse. Then the next thing, the meeting is stopped. And we protested. I'm one of the people who protested that no, you can't say this is a summary when more than 20 people haven't spoken. How do you know what they were going to say and how do you know what the conclusion was going to be when they've spoken? We were ignored, meeting was stopped abruptly. I actually went to the three leaders top of the top six. And I said, this is wrong. We must be given a, an opportunity to debate this matter, all of us. You can't give instructions when you haven't debated. We, be, we all believe in democratic centralism, but democratic centralism is not for a few. It's for all of us. You debate the issues. And when you have debated the issues exhaustively, you come to a conclusion. And then everybody follows that conclusion. This didn't happen this time. And if we're going to allow that kind of behavior within the ANC, that because it means you are actually defining other people outside that meeting, we shouldn't allow it. It's wrong, it's unprecedented, it's wrong. I did inform the leadership, even of how I'm going to, to vote based on that. That's number one. They know it. If you were to ask them, three of them know it. Who are these three? Well, it was the chair, the, the TG and the deputy president. So they were not surprised. So the chairperson, uh, I'll me. come to the second issue. The chairperson of the ANC, Gwede Mandashi, and the treasurer general, who is also acting as the secretary general of the ANC, who is actually the engine of the party and the deputy president of the ANC when they said the NEC adopted that position? Well, I'm not going to speak for them. I'm telling you what happened at the meeting. I didn't speak. I was in the list. There were 20-something people who still needed to speak. So you can draw your own conclusion. If they say there was a decision it means they are defining us out of that meeting and I did say to them this is wrong and you can't give instruction based on a dis discussion that excluded others secondly coming now to the report itself the report does not say president is guilty the, pres the, the report does not say the president must go. All that the, pres the report says is that 
based on their discussions, they are still So I didn't see anything wrong with that. It's not saying the president is guilty. It's not saying president must go. I don't see anything wrong when somebody is just to clear whatever the, 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 the panel. Remember this report is a report of a panel set, by, set up by parliament. parliament. It's a report chaired by former Justice Ngobo, who is a very renowned jurist, not only in South Africa, but even abroad. He is respected. He did his job. He concluded, because he was not asked to find the president guilty. No, he wasn't even asked to say whether the president should leave or not. He was just asked whether there is a case to answer and he said no, yes. And I didn't see anything wrong with that. Minister, some people are saying you have explained that the processes within the NEC were not exhausted. It is understandable. But others out there are saying uh, when there was a Gandla report, you supported the position that was taken by the leadership and the NEC and people feel that uh, it's a betrayal of what uh, you stand for in terms no. of always respecting the leadership. I respect the leadership. Even now I respect the leadership. I've never disrespected the leadership. What I did yesterday was not disrespectful to the leadership. No, I wasn't disrespectful. I was not disrespecting leadership. They know it. I've never disrespected them. Going forward, in terms of this report and your view, what has happened? And also to ensure that uh, people who are watching understand this better. What needs to be done to undo the perception and the damage that you defied the party? You explained that the processes were not exhausted in other words, uh, the, the, the leadership was not acting in good faith or also misled yes. the South African public when they said that uh, this is the NEC position. Well, it's up to the leadership. There is nothing I can do as a person. I've said, I've discussed this with the leadership. It's up to them to decide what to do. But I've not I'm, I'm a very disciplined cadre of the ANC, actually. I am. But I also do want to debate issues. If I'm elected to a structure, I want to contribute to that structure. So my vote yesterday does not mean I'm defiant. No, I'm not. In terms of what the chairperson of the ANC said yesterday to my colleague Mzwandi Lembeje is that uh, this matter in terms of the members who voted uh, with the opposition or voted in support. I didn't support. vote. No, no. Yes, I agree. I think just stop there. I did not vote with the opposition. When you are in parliament, you raise your hand and take an oath and you say, I, Kosazan. Yes. I wasn't voting with the opposition. In terms of you voting with your conscience yesterday, the chairperson is saying uh, they are going to discuss this. Uh, if there's a action to be taken, do you think you'll be able to defend your position? What, what, what do you make of Gwede Mandashe saying this matter will have to be presented? I think you must directors? ask him because it's not the first time. People, are you not uh, worried are, that you'll be expelled or disciplinary action will be instituted against you as the member of the party? Well, if, if the party wants me to answer, I'll answer. But the party must also be consistent. We have people in this NEC who have done this before. And they are there. They've never been even asked a question. Now, 
you can't so do... consistent is important in the party as well you have made yourself available for the position of the president of the ANC and in terms of the nominations your name was not uh, included in the list of candidates who got a, a threshold to be on the ballot based on the current processes even though there's still a process at conference that is the nomination from the floor with all what has happened are you still going to soldier on in terms of availing yourself should someone in the conference say uh, from the floor i nominate dr nkwasa zanadamini zuma for position of the president and which reminds me of uh, 2007 uh, all those who were almost like in the slate of former president Beggy. it was clear five days before the conference that uh, uh, the, it, the numbers in terms of provinces uh, were not in their favor are you still going to do the same and soldier on even though the writing is on the wall i don't know which writing is on the wall but yes your writing on the wall i don't understand because the the guidelines say people can be nominated from the floor if i'm not nominated it's fine if i'm nominated and i get the threshold i will avail myself the reality is if women are not occupying powerful positions they can't expect to have influence in some of the important decisions the anc members during this nomination process they failed to confirm women to be on the ballot in terms of higher positions um yes i i, I think it's important that women should be in the top leadership in reality it should be 50 50 even in the officials because we may say officials are not a structure they are the most important structure actually if you come to think of it they decide the agenda they decide the issues they process the issues so they are the most important structure it's important that women are there but we know that there is still patriarchy in the organization and in the in society and it's for all the progressive members of the ANC to push that we should have enough women in the ANC because we can't boast of being free as uh, the late OR said as a country if, our, if women are not free and if we are not because what happens in the ANC is also mirrored in society in business in many other areas of human endeavor women must be part of every aspect of life in every area of human endeavor women must be there so that's my view in the economy they must be there in judicial in politics they must be there and the ANC must lead the way ANC we boast as ANC of being the leader of society now if we say our constitution says we are all equal and we are non-sexist the ANC then if it's we are the leader of society we must lead even in that in terms of what has transpired um, are you still going to be able to serve the current president with honesty and dedication as you demonstrated previously with other leaders and do you think there will be that trust between him and you based on the fact that uh, i don't i don't discuss cabinet matters here but you are still willing will, to save i don't discuss that here but for south africans they would want to know that are you still willing to save the nation because when he appoints ministers, the appointments are linked to serving the nation. Serving the nation, yes. I will serve the nation in any capacity. 
as a minister, if I'm, I'm a minister, I'm serving. But even if I wasn't a minister, I'll still serve the nation in one way or another. That's my life. As a person who has been in the leadership, what happened to the ANC? OR did warn us that it would be more difficult uh, when we are in government than it is in struggle. Maybe at that time we didn't quite understand, but we can see it now. Of course, one of the things that we did when we first came was to establish branches of the ANC because the ANC is supposed to live amongst the people, be active amongst the people, be the barometer mm. of what's happening in society, be the leader of society. I think one of the things that has gone wrong is we haven't, we, we, we haven't really ensured that those structures are still rooted in communities. The, the branch is, is we, we must ensure that it's rooted in society, in communities, not only to know what's going on, but to also be part of the solution. That's why our branches are what based as well, so that they also correspond to what is happening as a governing part. But also besides the branches, the other structures Look at the last five years. We can go beyond, but because we don't have time, let's look at the last five years. They are, we, we have not strengthened the structures of the movement. They are regional um, structures that were RTTs for a long time. Uh, which were regional task mm. teams. It means there is no elected structure. There are provinces. Look at uh, Free State now. Look at uh, Northwest, almost for the entire five years, it was an RTT. We must learn from those lessons because we make mistakes, we must learn from them that it's very important to, to have strong structures and look at the leagues. We don't have a single league as we speak. Mm -hmm. They are all temporary structures. I think that's one thing that we must learn from that it has gone wrong. We all must take a collective uh, responsibility but the leadership must the coming leadership must concentrate on those structures because even the unity mm. you unite in action you just don't unite just by saying we're well, united we're going to unite we're going to unite must have a program that unites us, unity in action. So there must be strong action on the ground so that we unite in action. Of course, there was COVID also, which is a, an objective reality that created problems, not only in terms of the governing party as in government, mm -hmm. but also even in society because meetings were not allowed. There were all sorts of restrictions that had to be implemented. So that's objective reality that was there and hopefully were over it now. But also, I don't think we were strong in implementing resolutions of the 54th conference. We were not strong there. I think it's a lesson we must learn and we must try and implement in the 
the coming NEC must try and implement not only resolutions that will be taken in the 55th conference, but also resolutions that were taken in the 54th conference. We have um, problems in the country that we must attend to. Social problems, for instance, youth unemployment, women unemployment, unemployment in general, poverty, but of course, inequality is also a big issue. Um, youth, youth is the future of this country. It's both the present and the future. The fact that we don't have a youth league for the past five years is, is, is not good because then young people are not properly mobilized by their own peers. But also the Youth League is where in a way you get mentored, trained to uh, higher leadership once you are out of the Youth League. So it's a vacuum that is not good. Um, and we know that nature does not allow a vacuum. If there is a vacuum, somebody fills it. But that, that's, those are some of the things in the ANC, uh, not so much in government for now, because you asked me about the ANC. Mm. Those are some of the things. Let's look at women. Women, you said yourself, are not taken seriously in the political space. Um, in Parliament, we had to fight for it. If you recall, mm. in 1994, mm. we were fighting for 30% mm. of women in Parliament. Mm. At some stage, we had to go and camp at um, Campton Park mm. at Cordesa. Even with Cordesa, we had to struggle to get women to be part of the negotiations. So I think that's, that's an area that we must strengthen uh, to get women um, to... Ascend to higher positions. Yes, but also just to participate freely mm. and fully. In, in all areas of human endeavor, but also in the ANC, whether it's in local structures, whether it's, mm. and also women, we, we must try and create an environment where women feel free and feel safe. To participate. To participate. Free to express themselves without fear or favor, and also in society to be safe. The other conference that was almost uh, one of the defining moments was 2007. You were then the candidate for deputy president's position. It was very difficult at that time. Can you tell us at that time what was on your mind when you really availed yourself for that tough contest that was really, really tough? You know, the struggle for women continues and for women's participation. If we don't participate in that struggle, who will? Because part of that was to say to younger people, it is possible to stand for any position in the ANC. Whether you win or lose, but it is possible. Because if you don't stand, what are you saying? You are saying this is a no-go for women. 
what are you teaching younger people that they mustn't strive for that? So what was in my mind was exactly that, that women have a right and a responsibility to avail themselves for any position in the African National Congress, just as we say women must participate in any position, in any area of human endeavor. So it is part of that struggle. But also the ANC invests in us. And when you stand, it's not about yourself as an individual. You are thinking, at least that's what I think, that you need to, in, to plow back the experience, the knowledge, the training that the ANC has invested in you. So yes, it was a tough context, but the struggle is tough. Who, who said the struggle is easy? It's Going to tough. Nazrek, uh, some within the ANC and outside the ANC were saying that uh, you were endorsed by the former ANC president, Jacob Zuma. As a person who was contesting the president's position then, this association with the former president of the ANC or, you know, people saying you are a candidate that's being supported by so and so. What is your response? Because my response is I resent it and I was hoping you won't go there. I'm asking to because give you I a think chance it's a to very, really explain it. Because, because it's a very sexist mm. thing. I'm asking because it's better when people are talking to get responses from well, the person they are talking about and clarifying the issues no, is no, always... No, no, there's nothing to clarify. I'm an individual. I'm an ANC member. I joined this ANC as a young woman. I have an independent mind, as you can see over the years. I have a very independent mind. Nobody controls my mind. Nobody controls my views. Whoever endorses me may endorse me. I've, I've no control over that. But it's not said in good faith. It's people who are trying to find something wrong. And it's something that's very sexist. And I just hope that we can get out of that. And going forward, you are again willing to avail yourself for leadership. If you were to be nominated from the floor and you get the threshold, you are in the ballot and you get elected, how do you hope to take the ANC forward in terms of uh, dealing with the current challenges that the organization is facing. What I was explaining before about what I think we, we didn't do well, that's what I would, we should correct because the ANC leadership is a collective leadership. Of course, the, the head of the organization and the top six is very important. But I think we, we would have to just try and build a very strong organization. But I think it's also very important as a governing party to address the issues which are a problem. The economy is a problem. The unemployment is a problem. Now, one of the one of the resolutions of the fifty fourth conference was a skills revolution mm. because 
we understood that the economy of today needs skills. You can't grow your economy on unskilled labor. That's the first thing, and that has to be done. But we also have to look at what, for instance, there is te technology now. Um, there is ICT. We can actually be um, a hub for that, train young people, and we, we, we have I mean, we are an adva a, a medium um, economy, but we don't even produce our own computers. We don't produce our um, cell phones. But even if we didn't, if we trained our young people to at least do microconductors which are needed everywhere we could we could train a lot of young people we could absorb a lot of young people into jobs just making an example you know when you look at the economy and how it should grow you should look at your reality at the south african reality you should look at your own history should look at your own culture and so and utilize all those your own indigenous knowledge system and utilize all those if you look at our reality we have very talented young people i've spoken about the the technology we have the the young people we have the raw materials we can do that but we also have very talented young people in the creative, which is part of our culture. Mm -hmm. That can be a big pillar of the economy. It absorbs a lot of people. If we said, in fact, it is one of the pillars, but we're not investing as much in it as we should. And I think if we are to look at unemployment, especially amongst young people, we must also look at that. Our creative industry, our cultural heritage. If you look at other countries, look at whether it's UK, whether you look at France, you look at China, you look at Russia, they use their cultural heritage as part of their economic um, activities. They use part of their indigenous systems, their history there, as part of their economic system, because you must, the economy must be rooted in your reality. So that's, that's another area. We have mining. Mining, we mine, but we tend to send things raw. Beneficiation is important. We don't beneficiate. It is very important because you see, beneficiation creates a higher level of jobs that pay even better than the mining ones. Of course, it needs skills. So you create more jobs, better paying jobs, but you also get more revenue because finished goods are much more than when you send something raw. So when we are sending things raw, it means we are exporting jobs, which we shouldn't. We are exporting revenue, which we shouldn't. So there is also that area. Of course, we are, we are already doing agro-processing. We can do more in that. The value chain of agriculture can include 
a bit more people in agriculture. But generally, I think we must look at manufacturing a bit more. Uh, but also look at how we can um, create economies at a local area. If you look at the 54 districts, let alone the 257 um, municipalities, just the district 57, 52 of them. The metros, yes, there is economic activities in the metros and maybe in some of the big cities. But generally, yeah. there is no real local economic development that is planned and is developed and yet we think the economy can grow in the country without growing the local economy. But also we can't do away with poverty if we don't implement local economic development. We must identify what is there in that area that we can work on see what the comparative advantage of that place is and see what economic activities they can be. Skill the people are around that, create co-ops, but also one of the important aspects is the finance, mm -hmm. our financial sector. Our financial sector must be transformed. Just, just look at where we were during apartheid. There were building societies everywhere, assisting people with, with uh, housing, PEM build, PEM banks. Um, we should be creating local banks, co-ops, housing banks, and so on, so that people have access to finance for what they would like to do, whether it's small business, whatever. But of course, all that won't happen if we don't have electricity as well. Yes, coming to that, I mean, right now, we don't have electricity and to power the economy, you need energy. And if you don't, you are going to continue to have these challenges. What is your view? What is the ANC doing to ensure that uh, those deployed in government do what is supposed to be done to get out of this mess? Well, implementation is important. <laughs> um, I think implementation is the will to implement, then you implement. But let me say on, on electricity, I think it would be important to just call people to a discussion, those who know about ESCOM, who understand ESCOM, engineers and so on, put them in a room, let's discuss what is it. You know ESCOM, you can tell us what's wrong and how it can be fixed. We generate su sufficient uh, I think we've got more than 50 megawatts that we generate. And what is the problem? We need to call everyone because we know that maintenance is one issue. And maintenance is at different stages. There's day-to-day -day maintenance. There are things that need to be checked every day. There must be discipline of that. I don't know what, what is happening. Then there must be planned maintenance so that things don't break down before they are maintained. Because if we allow things to just break down, that's when you have unplanned shutdown of power stations. So, but also when there is a problem, you need to ensure that there are people who can fix that problem. Somebody used to say, um, I can't remember who, but somebody used to say, it must be like the 
Formula One when they are racing and the tire needs to be changed. Everyone is there, ready, and within mm -hmm. a very short time, it's done and the racer is racing. Even at ESCOM, uh, things like tube leaks or whatever must be fixed quickly. Everyone must be there. But because I'm not at ESCOM, that's why I'm saying it would be good to call everyone who knows ESCOM. and say, here we are, what is the problem? Why do we have so many megawatts that we can generate, but we are now having this, um, these rolling blackouts? And I'm sure, is, is there, there a will political tell us will to resolve this ESCOM matter? From my side, yes, there would be. I'm if saying the generally, power. in the ANC, is there a political will to really grapple with this issue and resolve this issue? Because leadership is quite important. Yes, maybe that those questions must go there. Uh, because the, the ANC may have, but I'm just me, I'm just making a suggestion that I would call everyone who knows about ESCO. Because yes, in the ANC, we, we, we may have the will, but we may not know exactly what to do and what could be wrong with ESCOM right now. We have people who have worked in ESCOM, we have engineers who have worked in ESCOM who understand it. There are people who have been there when there's load shedding and so on. Why don't we put them together and say, what is the problem with ESCOM? What, how can we fix it? You know it better. But also, we can't be shutting down power stations when we have load shedding. But also when we have problems with money, coal is a resource that we have. It's an abundant resource that we have used and we should continue to, to use until such time that we are able to replace it properly. How do we explain that we are wanting to shut down power stations, coal power stations, but the N3 and the N2 is full of trucks taking coal to the ports. What are those people going to do with coal? Why don't we ask ourselves? Continue. So, so that's why I'm saying when you, when you look at the economy, you must look at your reality, not at other people's reality, at your reality. What do you have? What can you use? Yes, we ha coal is a very important uh, part, but we also have uranium if we want to go nuclear. We have it, we mine it. It's a resource that we have. Then it's the technology that we must get. But we are also, we do have nuclear in South Africa, because sometimes uh, people talk as though we don't have nuclear. We do, but it's small. Maybe it's clean. It's once you have paid the capital input, it's cheaper over the years to generate. So maybe that's one of the things that, not in the immediate, because the immediate is to see how do we stop the load shedding, but in the medium is to say, how do we increase mm. the generation without increasing the, the pollution? Um, hydro. Hydro is also a renewable, so we can also increase that part. The sun and wind, solar and wind, can support that, but it can't be the mainstay of our grid. 
because the sun is only available 12 mm. hours a day when it's sunny. Mm. The wind is unpredictable. Right now here there's no wind. So those can support the grid, but they can't be the mainstay. The mainstay of the grid for the foreseeable future will be coal. We can increase nuclear, we can increase hydro, and then solar and wind can support. But we also need skills there. I hope, I don't know, I can't say, I hope we have enough skills there at ESCOM uh, to not just the engineers, but people who manage how coal is bought and how everything is done because it's not just, it's a whole value chain also. Um, mm. It's generation, it's transmission, it's distribution. But at the moment, I think we are having problems with just the availability of, of electricity. Yeah. The issue of bringing in young leaders to the ANC is a thorny one. What is your view? I think it's important to, as I said, when you look at your country, you don't look at what other people are doing. You look at your own history, at your own reality. Our own reality is that we, we must have young people, an intergenerational mix. They must be part of the mix. And that's a long-standing ANC um, policy. It, like anything else, the implementation is important. Just as we were saying, there were no women in the top six, there are some young people who are in the nominations but um, that's the ANC policy. It, it, it's a gener intergenerational mix. Are you confident that uh, the ANC will emerge united? That's my hope and that's my wish, that the, con the conference must go well and that out of that must come out an ANC that is responsive to people's needs, that is working together, united in action, and that implements resolutions. That's my hope and that's my wish. The ANC is still very important in this country. There are lots of people whose livelihoods and whose betterment of life is still dependent on the ANC. And therefore the ANC must remember that. It's, it's not just for ANC members. The ANC is important for the country. It's important for many people who, ca who, who are still looking for jobs, education, health, whatever. So. We mustn't look at it as though it's just ours. No. It's our collective heritage as people. And we must always remember that a strong ANC means that there can be a better life for many more people. A weak ANC means it will be a weaker program to give a better life to South Africans. The ANC members are servants of the people. So it's not ours. We can't just predict that there must be blood on the floor, there must be this, no. We must respect the people of this country and ensure that the ANC remains a solid organization that can implement the Freedom Charter, that can create a better life for the people. How do you get out of this picture 
where people are saying, yes, this is the liberation organization that we know, but now it is a different animal when coming to corruption? Well, I think um, we must not give up on creating a better ANC. We must be truthful. We must admit when something is wrong. And we must try and do better. We don't have the monopoly of ideas. We must get other people to give us ideas, as I was saying about ESCOM and so on. The public, you know, when I was in home affairs, maybe you won't remember, I had every one this day month a talk show. On, it started on 702, then it went to Metro. To try and get ideas from the public, one on what they think is wrong with home affairs, mm -hmm. because they are the consumers of that service, and two, what they think could be done better. Because none of us have the monopoly of ideas. So yes, as ANC members, but we must also be open to getting ideas from the public on issues where we have a problem, whatever the issues may be.